Axel Sev and Lyria had only been married for three days, so it was natural that their passion was still burning. Especially for Axel Sev, who had already experienced the pleasure of Lyria's body. He really wanted to take a full month off to honeymoon with his wife. Sylvian drove the car faster. This man was very professional at driving. He had participated in several car races and defeated famous racers. In 10 minutes, the car entered a luxurious villa, which was Axelsev and Lyria's residence. Axelsev and Lyria immediately went to their bedroom. Just as Axelsev was about to initiate another attack, Lyria stopped him. I just came back from the hospital. It's better if I take a shower first, Lyria said. She really didn't want to risk Axelsev catching any illness from her. Axelsev let go of his wife due to her sensible reason. All right, I'll make a call then. Okay. Lyria sighed. She immediately went to the bathroom and began to clean herself up. She didn't take too long to shower. Lyria was used to doing things quickly. She never indulged herself in long baths. She preferred to shower under the water stream. It was more practical and didn't waste time. When she came out, she didn't find Axelsev there. Lyria went to the dressing room and picked up a nude colored satin nightgown with lace accents. Lyria shuddered when she saw the whole collection of nightgowns, all of them thin and revealing. Some were made of satin. Some were like fishnet, and some even came with a string that couldn't cover her private parts. According to Lyria, none of the nightgowns were suitable for her. There were no pajamas with cartoon characters in sight. Now she was just wearing a nightgown that she considered decent. Although in reality, it was almost like not wearing anything at all. Lyria was very curious about who prepared these dreadful nightgowns. After drying her hair, Axelsev entered the room. He smiled at his wife in the easily terrible nightgown. Axelsev personally chose the nightgowns for Lyria. He deliberately picked the thinner fishnet ones so he could easily tear them apart. Are you done? Lyria approached Axelsev. Axelsev pulled Lyria into his embrace. Are you ready now? Lyria blushed. Yes. Axelsev carried Lyria in his arms and gently placed her on the bed. My wife is so beautiful. Lyria didn't respond to Axelsev's praise, feeling her body getting hot under his gaze. Next, Axelsev started kissing Lyria until her lips turned red and slightly swollen. Axelsev then moved to Lyria's neck, inhaling the scent of her nape. You smell so good, darling. Axelsev loved the soft scent of Lyria's body. Even if he were blind, he would still recognize his wife by this distinctive aroma. Um. Lyria exclaimed when Axelsev bit her bare shoulder. Axelsev chuckled. I just wanted to make sure if your flesh tastes as good as your body smells. My flesh isn't tasty. Long your flesh is uh, delicious, especially this part and the one below. I really like it. Axelsev's hand grabbed Lyria's breasts. Lyria's face turned even redder at Axelsev's lewd words. You're so naughty. Lyria exclaimed. Axelsev laughed mischievously. You're right. I become very naughty because of you. It's all your fault for being so attractive. Every time I'm, I see you, I just want to devour you. Could this conversation stop? Lyria felt even more embarrassed. She was probably as red as a tomato now. Axelsev loved teasing his wife, but he preferred to devour her now, so he stopped talking and started to please his wife. Next, it was Lyria who made a lot of sounds. She would occasionally scream when Axelsev thrust too deeply. And then, it was Axelsev who growled, feeling himself so comfortable being inside Lyria. After lifting Lyria's leg, Axelsev changed their lovemaking position with Lyria turning around. He lifted Lyria's buttocks and started thrusting again. Lyria became even more vocal as she felt Axelsev's possession filling her lower body. She was entranced by the pleasure occasionally giving Axelsev instructions to either speed up or deepen the thrust. One long session ended, but it wasn't over for the night. Now, it was Lyria on top, with Axelsev admiring her naked form. Her lips curved as she saw Lyria's passionate expression. 
Her hands reached for Lyria's breasts, squeezing them to add to her pleasure. Lyria moved up and down, occasionally biting her lip when her buttocks pressed firmly against Axel Sev's thighs. It felt too tight in there. After that session ended, Lyria lay back on the bed. She thought Axel Zev was already satisfied, but he devoured her once again. They stopped when the night was very late. They even skipped their dinner. Sleepiness overcame Lyria's hunger, so she slept without having dinner first. For Lyria, who had lived under oppression in her grandmother's mansion, skipping dinner was nothing. She had experienced it more than ten times since her father's death. Axel Sev covered his wife's body, which was still in his embrace, with a blanket. He felt a little guilty for letting his wife sleep without having dinner, but he also couldn't wake her up because their activities earlier had surely made Lyria tired and very sleepy. In the end, Axel Sev also slept without having dinner. He felt so peaceful with the scent of Lyria's body enveloping his senses. It was wonderful to sleep with his living body pillow again. Lyria woke up and didn't find Axel Sev by her side. She saw a note on the nightstand with a bouquet of red roses placed on it. She reached for the rose stem and smelled its fragrance, then took the note and started reading it. I'll be going out of town for a business matter for three days. Take care of yourself while I'm away and remember to step on those who oppress you. After reading this, go downstairs for breakfast. I don't want, I don't want your beautiful stomach to suffer. Then contact me, your husband. Lyria smiled softly. She didn't expect the intimidating Axel Sevlinander in the eyes of others could do something sweet like this. She kissed the rose aroma on her hand once again feeling very content. She went to the bathroom and started cleaning herself up. She clicked her tongue when she saw the love marks left by Axel Sev on her body. There were really so many of them. After showering, Lyria chose an outfit that would cover the love marks on her body. She settled for a knee-length dress with a high collar. Miss, your breakfast is ready. Yes, thank you. Lyria sat down and started enjoying the breakfast prepared by the mansion's special chef. It was truly delicious. Lyria rarely had such tasty food after her father's death because she didn't have enough money. And at her grandmother's mansion, she would only get leftovers or sometimes no food at all. Breakfast was finished. Lyria immediately went out. She was going to visit her mother at the hospital today. She drove her car which was already at the mansion that morning. Lyria didn't forget to contact Axel Sev. Am I bothering you? No, I just arrived at the branch office. Like, you, you have breakfast? Yes, I'm done with breakfast. I'm going to the hospital now to see Mom. Okay, drive carefully. Send my regards to Mom. Yes, I'll end the call now. Okay. Lyria then ended the call. She drove at a moderate speed. In less than 30 minutes, she arrived at the hospital. She immediately headed to her mother's ward, located in the hospital's best ward. When Lyria entered, she saw the same sight. Her mother was still lying on the hospital bed. Lyria wondered when her mother would wake up. She wouldn't give up on her mother, but living with that hope was putting a lot of pressure on Lyria. Her mother could leave her at any time. The activities Lyria did when accompanying her mother involved cleaning her mother's body and then starting to talk. This time, Lyria shared her happiness with her mother, talking about her husband, a man who resembled her father, someone who always protected her mother, a man who became a home for her mother. Mom, please wake up. You need to see your son-in-law. Please don't leave me. Lyria gently caressed her mother's hand, her eyes filled with affection. Time passed, and it was already evening but Lyria was still unwilling to leave her mother. Her phone rang, and she quickly answered the call from her grandfather's personal assistant. Yes, Uncle Dastian. Miss Lyria, the great master, has passed away. Lyria's face froze, and tears immediately fell down her cheeks. The great master's body will be brought back home now. Miss Lyria, come back home. Drive carefully. Okay, Uncle. Lyria's feelings were suffocating now. 
She didn't expect yesterday to be the last time she saw her grandfather. Now another person who loved her was gone, leaving her alone. Lyria looked at her mother. Mom, please hold on for me. Please don't leave me, Lyria cried uncontrollably. It took her some time to calm down and be able to walk out of her mother's ward. Lyria held the car keys weakly. She took a deep breath and then drove her car back to her grandmother's mansion. When Lyria arrived, her grandfather's body had also been brought back home. Crying sounds were heard from inside. Her grandmother, uncles, aunts, and cousins were sitting next to the body with teary eyes. Lyria felt like tearing their hypocritical faces apart. Since her grandfather was hospitalized, they rarely visited him. Even her grandmother, whose visits could be counted on one hand. Meanwhile, her uncles always made excuses with their busy schedules. Her aunt would say, she was taking care of her grandmother, who was also not in good condition. And Caitlin? The woman was just like her father, using work as an excuse. Only Lyria herself often came to the hospital to visit her grandfather. Maybe not every day, but in one week, Lyria would definitely come to the hospital. She never forgot to show her devotion to her beloved grandfather. Lyria approached and looked at her grandfather's pale face. Her heart shattered and her tears burst forth. Facing such a big loss twice made Lyria feel so devastated. She didn't even have someone to comfort her now. It was exactly like when her father was gone. She only had Estelle by her side, while the man considered her fiancé couldn't even be bothered to accompany her. As it was already dark, her grandfather's funeral would be held the next morning. Tonight, Lyria didn't sleep as she stayed by her grandfather's side, while others were already done with their hypocritical faces and resting. She was only accompanied by Axelsev, who comforted her through the phone until the early hours of the morning. Lyria was accompanied by Estelle during her grandfather's funeral. All of the close relatives of her grandfather were there to bid him farewell. Tears continued to fall from Lyria's eyes despite her efforts to hold them back. She knew that her sadness would burden her grandfather. Lyria, your grandfather is at peace now. Don't drown in sorrow. Estelle said gently, feeling hurt to see Lyria in this state. In two years, Lyria lost the two most beloved men in her life. Lyria couldn't say anything. Her throat hurt too much even to breathe. The funeral was over and the Shyster extended family had left, leaving only Lyria, accompanied by Estelle. Grandpa, rest peacefully. Send my love to Dad and Grandpa Nicholas, Lyria said mournfully. Now Grandpa doesn't have to feel guilty anymore. Thank you for being a good grandfather. To me, I love you so much. Lyria's tears flowed again, and she cried until her shoulders shook. She didn't even realize that the person embracing her had changed. The familiar scent of Axel Sev's body made Lyria raise her wet face. Axel, she whispered. Axel Sev's heart ached seeing Lyria's tears. He pulled her into his arms. I, it's okay for you to cry more for your losses he said, wanting Lyria to feel some relief. He knew crying over someone who was gone wasn't a good thing, but crying could bring a sense of relief, and he wanted Lyria to feel that. Lyria continued to sob silently, but Axelzev's warm embrace made it much easier for her to calm down. Gradually, Lyria's tears subsided. Her eyes were now red and swollen from crying too much. You feeling better now? Axel Sev asked gently. He didn't know how to comfort his wife, who had just lost her loved ones, but he would always be there for her in her hardest times. Estelle, witnessing Axel Sev's affection for Lyria, felt touched. This time, Lyria was with the right man. Estelle was glad that there was someone else who could share both joy and sorrow with Lyria. Yes. Oh, let's go home, Axel Sev said, wiping tears from Lyria's face. Okay. Lyria felt drained now. Suddenly, she remembered something. Axel, this is Estelle, my friend. 
Lyria introduced Axelsev to Estelle. Axelsev shifted his gaze to Estelle. Hello, I'm Axelsev, Lyria's husband. He was friendly to Estelle because she was his wife's close friend. Hello, Astel, Lyria's best friend. Let's have lunch together sometime. Thank you for taking care of my wife all this time. No need to thank me. Lyria and I take care of each other. My assistant will come to you home. Lyria will come with me. No need, I'll drive myself. All right then. Axel Sev didn't want to force it further. Take care on the road, Astel. Sure, sure. Estelle then left the parking lot first, followed by Axel Sev and Lyria. Do you want to go back to our home or your grandmother's home? Just... Axel Sev asked his wife, who was now sitting next to him. Back to my grandmother's home. Lyria couldn't possibly return to Axel Sev's mansion on the day of her grandfather's funeral. It would give others a chance to criticize her. Okay, I'll take you there. Uh, contact me afterward. If you feel unwell, let me know. Yes, I will. Is your work done? No, I postponed it. I can't work peacefully while thinking about you. Axel Sev said honestly. Imagining his wife crying endlessly made him uncomfortable. He chose to leave his work behind. I'm fine. You can go back to work. Lyria didn't want to disturb Axel Sev's work. Axel Sev looked at Lyria carefully, sighed, and then followed his wife's words. Even though he was in the same city, he couldn't be with Lyria at the Chaster Mansion. Axel Sev's car stopped at the entrance of the Chaster family mansion. He pulled his wife into his arms again. Remember to contact me if you feel unwell. Don't do well too much in your grief. I don't, I don't like seeing you cry so much. I won't cry too much anymore. Axel Sev gently kissed Lyria's lips without any hint of desire. I'll always be there for you. Never think that you're alone. Lyria nodded her head. With Axel Sev's presence, she no longer felt lonely. She still had one family to accompany her. Lyria got out of Axel Sev's car and entered her grandmother's mansion. A few moments later, Axel Sev's car left. There were still many guests at the mansion, so her grandmother, uncles, aunts, and cousins were still busy feigning their grief. Days passed, and the wedding day had arrived. Despite Lyria's recent loss of her grandfather, the wedding was not postponed. The Luther family had rented a hotel ballroom for their son's wedding. All the invited guests were present, eager to see which kind-hearted woman would marry the Luther family's son. Mallory, Samuel, Eugene, Kaitlin, and Raisin were also present at the venue. Raisin found Lyria even more repulsive now. She was not hesitant to marry a mentally challenged man just to live in luxury, but he wasn't surprised. With the Luther family's wealth, Lyria could play around with many men while her idiot husband stayed at home. Meanwhile, Mallory, Eugene, and Kaitlin were happy. Lyria would soon enter a new hell. They knew that the Luther family was not seeking a daughter in law, but a lifelong servant to clean up after their son's urine and feces. Lyria would live in misery there. In a special room, Lyria was currently wearing her wedding gown while the groom and his parents were preparing in another room. Is it ready? Lyria asked the woman doing her makeup. Yes, miss, it's ready. The makeup artist replied, looking at Lyria with disdain. She saw Lyria as a money, hungry woman who was willing to marry an idiotic man. Miss, I'll go downstairs for a moment to fetch my belongings. Yes, please do. Lyria replied. She had thought about drugging the makeup artist to escape, but it turned out that the makeup artist left first. Lyria quickly left the room, lifting her heavy gown. Downstairs, she had asked Estelle to wait for her. As she walked through the corridor, she was startled to hear Mallory's voice. Lyria bit her lip, fearing that if the old woman found out, she would force her into the marriage. As Lyria's heart pounded, a door opened and her hand was pulled inside. When she looked to see who was pulling her, she immediately felt relieved. My husband. Axel Sev smiled gently. I still remember you have a husband? Mm-hmm. He gazed at his beautiful wife. The longer he knew Lyria, the more he adored her. 
She looked truly exquisite in her wedding gown. How did you manage to be here? I had to stop my wife from marrying someone else, so that's why I'm here. Lyria's face blushed. Axel, I won't marry anyone else. I already have the perfect husband. Axel Sev chuckled softly. Good to know my wife realizes she has a perfect husband. His hands caressed Lyria's pretty face. I'm darling. I, I really want to take off your wedding gown right now. Then do it. Axel Sev laughed again. My wild kitten. He began unzipping Lyria's gown and then gently lowered the beautiful gown. In the future, I'll give you a wedding gown many times more beautiful than this one. Lyria smiled sweetly. I believe every word my husband says. Axel Sev was pleased with Lyria's answer. He began kissing his wife's lips. While Lyria and Axel Sev enjoyed their moment together, the Luther and Chyster families were searching for Lyria's whereabouts. They even checked the surveillance cameras, but unfortunately, Axelsev had already arranged for the cameras to be non-functional. Mrs. Mallory, you must take responsibility for today. Rebecca glared at Mallory fiercely. She had never been humiliated like this before. She had invited many people to attend her son's wedding, but now the bride was nowhere to be found. Mrs. Rebecca, I will find Lyria soon. She won't be able to escape. Mallory assured Rebecca. The woman's face turned grim due to Lyria's actions. Immediately call that little whore. Mallory snapped at Eugene. Eugene took out his phone from his pocket and tried to contact Lyria, but her phone was not reachable. Mom, I can't reach Lyria. That damn slut. Mallory said angrily. Her plan to sell Lyria was about to succeed, but Lyria escaped at the last moment. Instruct everyone to find her immediately. Okay, ma'am. Samuel immediately contacted his assistant to deploy people to search for Lyria. Mrs. Mallory, this wedding must proceed. I want a replacement bride. Rebecca demanded. There was another young woman in the Chester family. Mrs. Rebecca, what do you mean by replacement bride? Eugene knew where Rebecca was heading. Are you referring to Kaitlyn, my daughter? Yes, your daughter should replace Lyria. Mrs. Rebecca, you're dreaming if you think I'll let my precious granddaughter marry your idiot son. Mallory strongly disagreed. There was no way she would send her beloved granddaughter to live with an idiotic man. What did you just call him? An idiot son. How dare you? Victor, Rebecca's husband, spoke angrily. Your son is indeed an idiot. How could you ask for Kaitlyn, who is perfect, to become a servant cleaning up your idiot son's urine and feces? Rebecca and Victor grew even angrier at Mallory and Eugene's words. If that's the case, there won't be a wedding between the Luther and Chyster families, and we will never work together with the Chyster family again. What happened today? You must compensate us for the losses. Rebecca stared sharply at Mallory and Eugene. It's not us who ruined this event. If you want compensation, then find Lyria. She's the one responsible. Mallory replied. She wouldn't spend a penny to compensate them. Good. Remember this. Well, in the future, the Chyster family will be the enemy of the Luther family. Victor declared firmly. Then he led his wife out along with their son, who didn't even understand what people around him were talking about. How could you speak so rudely to the Luther family? Samuel scolded his mother and wife for calling the Luther family's son an idiot. They asked for too much, Samuel. How could they ask Kaitlyn to replace Lyria? Mallory was annoyed. What about the fate of the company now? They even terminated the cooperation and we can't get more funding. Samuel felt frustrated and desperate. This is all because of that whore. Eugene blamed Lyria. Her face looked terrifying. If Lyria were in front of him now, she would probably choke her to death. In the wedding hall, Kaitlyn, who was waiting for the wedding to start but was still delayed, decided to go to the room where Lyria was getting ready. She went there accompanied by Raisin. Grandma, Mom, Dad, what's going on? Why hasn't the wedding started? Where is Lyria? She didn't find Lyria in the room. Lyria left. She probably found a man with more money than the Luther family. 
Mallory deliberately spoke ill of Lyria in front of Rosin. What does Lyria really want? She's gone too far. She wanted this wedding, but now she's running away. She's truly humiliating our family. Grandma, Mom, Dad, please calm down. Don't be too angry. Lyria might have her own reasons for running away. Kaitlin urged. She still acted like a gentle woman who was trying to calm everyone down. In her heart, she cursed Lyria repeatedly. The woman escaped again this time. No need to speak up for her, Caitlin. Your cousin has gone way too far this time. Rosin is right, Caitlin. A woman like Lyria doesn't deserve to be defended. Look at how she embarrassed our family. Caitlin fell silent. She no longer spoke up for Lyria. She had successfully made Lyria look even worse in Raisin's eyes. Let's leave this place. Samuel stormed out of the venue first. In the wedding hall, all the guests had now been informed that the wedding was canceled. They thought that the bride had regained her senses and decided to call it off. Meanwhile, inside a hotel room, Lyria and Axelsev were still sharing their affection. They didn't care about what was happening in the wedding hall or how angry the Lutheran Chester families were at the moment. After a long while, Lyria asked Axelsev to stop. She still had to deal with her family. She grabbed her phone and turned it on. There were dozens of messages she received, all filled with curses from Eugene and Mallory. Her phone rang again, a call from Eugene. Lyria answered the call nonchalantly. You damn whore! Where are you now? Eugene's angry voice rang out, but luckily, Lyria had anticipated it and kept the phone away from her ear. She made sure to record the conversation. Mrs. Eugene, what's happening? Being angry is not good for your health. You dare to talk back. Come back immediately. This time, Mallory's voice sounded high-pitched. Come back. Where should I come back to? Your place is not my home. Lyria, I'll definitely strangle you to death. You dare to run away from your wedding today. Mrs. Mallory, I never agreed to that marriage. You should have replaced me with Caitlin to keep the wedding going. You damn whore. Do you think our precious Kaitlyn deserves to marry an idiot like him? Come back now or I will stop your mother's treatment. Mrs. Mallory, you should check whether mom is still being treated at the hospital or not. Lyria said nonchalantly. Behind her, Axelsev gently stroked her bare back. Mallory immediately ordered Samuel to check if Selly was still in the hospital or not. Lyria, you dare to play tricks on me. Did you plan this in advance? Mallory was infuriated. Lyria, you're really shameless. Is this how you repay the family that has supported your life? Mrs. Mallory, it's only been two years. How can it be compared to the money you received after marrying me to the Luther family's son? Lyria, come back right now. Or if I find you, I'll make your life a living hell. Mallory's head was throbbing with anger. Too bad I won't be coming back. Lyria. Mallory yelled loudly. Lyria, you've done well. Axel Sif praised Lyria happily. Lyria turned around and saw her husband's smiling face. I won't let them hurt me again. Tonight, the Kaitlin and Raisin families had dinner together. There was no other way for the Chester family to save their company except to seek help from the Raisin family. Moreover, the pressure from the Luther family had caused many businessmen to turn away from the Chester family, making the situation even worse. After dinner, the two families discussed the issue of the Chester Construction Company's request. We agree to provide funds to the Chester Construction Company, but we want half of the shares to be given to Kaitlin. Also, we want Raisin and Kaitlin's wedding to be expedited. Raisin's father, Alexei Brooks, declared to the entire Kaitlin family. His intention was clear. He would provide the money, but wouldn't lose anything since ultimately his son-in-law would become the largest shareholder of Chester Construction. Currently, Samuel held 30% of the shares, Mallory held 20%, Kaitlin held 5%, and Eugene held 10%. Samuel pondered for a moment. Giving 15% of the shares to Kaitlin was indeed a heavy decision for him, but he had no other choice. The company would collapse 
if they didn't get help from the Brooks family. We have no objections to your terms, Alexei. Mallory, as the head of the Chester family, made the decision. For her, it was fine to lose half of the shares rather than falling from luxury. Moreover, the shares were given to her beloved granddaughter. And in the end, she would give all her shares to Caitlin. Then it's settled. Let's talk about Raisin and Caitlin's wedding. Raisin caressed Caitlin's hand that he held. After one year of engagement, they would get married soon. Raisin was truly happy because he would marry the woman he loved. The same was true for Kaitlyn. After a long wait, after a long wait, she would finally marry Raisin Brooks, one of the three wealthiest men in the city. By marrying Raisin, her social status would rise. She would be respected even more, and all women would envy her. Kaitlyn felt joyous in her heart. She didn't forget to mock Lyria because she would become the young mistress of the Brooks family while Lyria would end up miserable. The discussion about the wedding concluded an hour later, and it was agreed that Rosin and Kaitlyn's wedding would take place in three months. Darling, is it okay for us to get married? I still feel guilty about Lyria. Caitlin said softly, genuinely concerned about Lyria's feelings. Why are you worrying about Lyria, sweetheart? Our wedding has nothing to do with her. Besides, you're not at fault. I'm the one who chose you. All the blame lies with Lyria. She betrayed me first. Razin replied. When he thought about how Lyria betrayed him, he felt extremely angry. He despised being betrayed. Lyria had fooled him for years. She had relationships with many men since she was a teenager, but she concealed it so well that he believed he was the only man loved by Lyria. In the past, he was truly foolish to put Lyria at the center of his life. He even distanced himself from many women to avoid misunderstanding with Lyria. Unfortunately, Lyria never appreciated his love and loyalty. She was too cheap to be satisfied with just one man. What was even more terrible was that Lyria was not as pure as Raisin had thought. She went to nightclubs and hotels with men. Since learning this, Raisin became cold towards Lyria. That was when Kaitlin came into his life and started giving him attention. Initially, he only wanted to use Kaitlin as an escape. But in the end, he genuinely fell in love with her tenderness and purity. One night, they got carried away in a romantic atmosphere and ended up engaging in a sexual relationship, and it turned out to be Caitlin's first time. Since then, Raisin valued Caitlin deeply. He directed all his attention and love towards her, and it remained that way until now. His relationship with Caitlin was not as filthy as Lyria claimed. If Lyria had not betrayed him first, there was no way he would have engaged in a relationship with Caitlin who comforted him and healed his heart. For Razin, Kaitlin was a thousand times better than Lyria. Additionally, Kaitlin's parents came from a respected family, unlike Lyria, whose mother was a formal barmaid. Razin knew well that Lyria's chief behavior stemmed from her mother. Fortunately, he wasn't as blind as Lyria's father, who was willing to marry a former barmaid who had served many men like Lyria's mother. Should we invite Lyria to our wedding? I really want her to be there and give us her blessing. You can invite her, but if she doesn't want to come, don't blame yourself. Kaitlyn smiled sweetly. I love you so much, darling. Raven gently caressed Kaitlyn's head. I love you too, darling. This morning, Lyria returned to work after a long read. As she entered her office, the strange looks from her colleagues made her uncomfortable. Did you really fool around with an idiotic man? Did you really take his money and then run away on your wedding day? Miley asked with curiosity. Since yesterday, gossip had spread that Lyria took money by fooling an idiotic man. And then she ran away on her wedding day, taking his money with her. Lyria knew who spread such rumors in the company. Ever since she joined the company almost a year ago, she had been looked down upon by many employees. 
She had heard other female employees from different divisions call her a whore, a cheap woman who had relationships with many men. Lyria had no intention of fixing her reputation. She simply let such things fade away on their own. It's true that I ran away from the wedding, but it's not true that I took money from that man. Quinn thought it was enough. She no longer needed to protect the Chester family's reputation as her grandfather was no longer alive. Her colleagues now looked at Lyria with disgust. They had heard about Lyria sleeping with many men, but they didn't expect her to also fool around with an idiotic man for his money. Lyria, are you so desperate for money that you don't mind fooling around with an idiotic man? Sarah said sarcastically. Lyria calmly looked at Sarah, knowing that in this division, Sarah was the co-worker who hated her the most. She always looked at Lyria with disdain. Are you deaf? Which part of what I said indicated that I fooled around with that man? Lyria, when a thief confesses, the prisons will be full. Who doesn't know your track record? You're a cheap woman who sleeps with many men. No wonder you ran short of money and started targeting idiotic men for their money. You are very suited to be a fiction writer, Sarah. I think you should consider changing professions soon. Lyria had never wanted to get involved in fights in the past. But now, she couldn't stay silent anymore when others spoke ill of her. What's going on here? Jennifer, Lyria's boss, looked at Lyria and Sarah with an unhappy expression. It was still early in the morning, but tension had already arisen between Lyria and Sarah. Mrs. Jennifer, Lyria has tarnished our team's reputation again. A wild woman like Lyria doesn't belong on our team. Jennifer was the one who brought Lyria into the company. She admired Lyria's exceptional talent in fashion design. Hearing Lyria being called a wild woman by Sarah didn't sit well with Jennifer. What's the matter? Jennifer ignored Sarah's words and asked Lyria. As mass Jennifer rumors about me are spreading in the company. They say I fooled around with an idiotic man to take his money and then ran away on my wedding day. My reputation has been truly damaged. With me on the team, it tarnishes our team's image. Jennifer looked at Sarah coldly. Did I ask you? I apologize, Miss Jennifer. Sarah immediately lowered her head. The circulating rumors are not true, Ms. Jennifer. I did run away, but I didn't take a single penny from that man. Did you hear what Lyria said? The rumors are false, so don't easily believe baseless rumors. Mrs. Jennifer, you can't just believe Lyria without any proof. She's probably lying. How could she admit her disgusting actions? Sarah, Lyria's personal matters have nothing to do with her work. Don't be too nosy. Jennifer clenched her fists, not liking Sarah's biased attitude. The woman was too fond of Lyria. Lyria's actions had made the workplace uncomfortable, but she didn't care. She would clear her name soon. During lunch break, Lyria went to another division. It was the place where someone spread rumors about her. Mia, I need to talk to you. Lyria blocked the path of a curly-haired woman in front of her. Maya looked at Lyria scornfully. I won't demean myself by talking to a disgusting woman like you. Maya, we all know that you're the one spreading rumors in the company. You're the one telling everyone that I'm a cheap woman who sleeps with many men. And you're also the one spreading the rumor that I took money from an idiotic man and ran away on my wedding day. I never expected you to be so envious. Envious? Lyria, what's there to envy about you? You're just a lowly woman. Your mother was a former barmaid and your father wasn't loved at all by your grandmother. Your life is so miserable, so why would I envy you? If you're not envious, then why are you slandering me? I'm not slandering you. What's circulating right now is the truth. You approached an idiotic man to take his money. Mia, there's no one else here. You don't need to put on an act in front of me. You clearly know that's not the truth. Then what if it's not the truth? People believe what's already spread. Lyria, in everyone's eyes, 
You're a cheap woman, obsessed with money. Maya sneered at Lyria. Mia, I never did anything wrong to you, but you deliberately slandered me. Never did anything wrong. Lyria, you seduced the man I liked. Uh, so because the man you liked didn't like you back. That's why you hold a grudge against me and slander me like this. You're truly pathetic, Mia. Shut up! Lyria, you're more pathetic than me. I have a relationship with the manager of this company now, but you, you were even abandoned by your fiancé? Mia, I want you to clear my name, or I will take action against you for slandering me. Tusk, what can a lowly woman like you do? Your family doesn't even like you. Maya didn't stop insulting Lyria. You shouldn't pick a fight with me, Lyria. I might make you lose your job. Let's see who will lose their job. Lyria then turned around confidently. She left Mia behind while holding the pen she had in her skirt pocket. She had recorded her conversation with Maya earlier. With that recording, she could prove that Mia had slandered her. Sir, rumors about Madam are spreading in the company. Sylvian informed Axelsev, who was currently studying a proposal for a mega project that his company would be involved in. Yeah, what rumors? Axelsev stopped working. If it was about Lyria, he would listen attentively. Madam is being referred to as a woman who plays with idiotic men for money and then runs away on her wedding day after taking their money. Uh, who is spreading such rumors? Axelsev really wanted to tear apart the person who spread rumors about his wife. Maya Stark, one of the employees in the public relations division. Hire that woman and put her on the blacklist so she won't get a job in any company associated with the Leander Group. Very well, sir. Sylvian already predicted how his master would handle the woman who disturbed what belonged to him. Lyria had just finished lunch when she was approached by Kaitlin in the company cafeteria. Lyria, thank goodness you're here. I thought you really ran away and disappeared. Kaitlin looked at Lyria with a loving gaze. The woman was putting on an act again. What do you want here, Kaitlin? Lyria wouldn't stop Kaitlin's drama. She wanted Kaitlin to act even further so it would be more enjoyable for her to destroy the woman. Lyria, why are you being so cold? I'm here because I'm worried about you. You ran away from the wedding so suddenly, and you made our grandmother and parents very worried. Caitlin started portraying Lyria as a villain in front of others. The company cafeteria was always crowded, not only because of the affordable prices, but also because the company paid attention to the quality of the food for its employees. It was nutritious and delicious, so the large cafeteria was almost always filled with staff. Now, some people began to pay attention to Lyria and Kaitlin. They had glanced at Lyria before and thought that she had quite the nerve to still eat at the cafeteria after the rumors that spread in the company. It was you who wanted this marriage, but you ran away and embarrassed our family. Lyria, if you were not satisfied with the heir of the Luther family, you shouldn't have offered yourself to be a daughter-in-law of the Luther family from the beginning. Our family has returned the money you took from the Luther family. At the very least, you should return home and explain it to Grandma. Caitlin, is it not enough that you used Maya to spread rumors at my workplace that you have to come here yourself? Lyria looked at Caitlin disdainfully. Mia and Caitlin knew each other. They were quite close during high school. Lyria, what are you talking about? I'm here because I'm concerned about you. You didn't return home after running away from your wedding? Caitlin replied, looking hurt. People around Lyria began to whisper and criticize her. It turned out that the rumors circulating were not just rumors. Even Lyria's family mentioned it. Since you're so intent on tarnishing my reputation, then I won't hesitate to take action against you. Lyria took out her phone and played a recording she had played before at the restaurant. Kaitlin's face turned pale. Lyria, how do you still have that recording? Quickly turn it off. Lyria smiled mockingly. Caitlin, did you really think I would delete all the recordings I have just because of grandfather's request? Foolish, I'm not that naive. I still have copies of all the recordings I deleted before. Lyria! Turn it off. 
All right, you want me to stop playing it, don't you? Lyria stopped it. However, she chose a different way. I will send this recording to the company's social chat group. Before Kaitlin could stop Lyria, the recording had already been sent. She didn't send just one, but four. The recording of her grandmother forcing her to marry Ramos, then the one with the Luther family's son, the recording of her running away from the wedding, and lastly, her conversation with Maya. Lyria was truly going to clear her name today. Kaitlin didn't know what Lyria had sent, but it certainly wouldn't be good for her. Lyria, you're really cunning. You deceived grandfather. Don't blame me, Caitlin. I learned from grandma and also from you. The cafeteria workers who had listened to the recordings from Lyria were now looking at Kaitlin with horror. How could there be such heartless families like Kaitlin's and Lyria's and the others? They used Lyria as a bargaining chip to secure the company. Not only that, they also threatened Lyria with her mother's life. Not stopping there, Kaitlin also slandered Lyria and spread false news that she willingly became a second wife and married an idiotic man for money. Kaitlin and her family were truly evil and terrible. All that you heard in the recordings were manipulated by Lyria. Well then, let's call in an expert to verify whether the recordings are genuine or not. I also want to submit other recordings where you slandered me by having affairs with multiple men. Lyria, you're really audacious. You'll pay for this. Kaitlin then turned and left. The woman wouldn't be able to stay there any longer under the judgmental gazes of others. Lyria only looked indifferently as Kaitlin left. But then she turned to someone else. Where are you going, Maya? Lyria approached Maya. Maya clenched her fists, her eyes now filled with rage. She wanted to tear Lyria's face apart. Aren't you supposed to apologize to me for slandering me? Under the disgusted gazes of the people, Maya felt extremely pressured. She couldn't defend herself because of the recordings provided by Lyria. Maya, how could you slander Lyria like that? One of Lyria's teammates looked at Maya in horror. She couldn't believe that Mia would do such a thing to Lyria. I didn't slander her. She really is a cheap woman. Maya reluctantly refused to admit her wrongdoing. But everyone was not foolish. From the recordings, it was clear that Mia was the one who slandered Lyria. Mia, if you don't apologize, I will sue you for defamation. Lyria said seriously. She had been harmed by Mia's words. Her reputation was tarnished. Maya's face turned pale, instantly. If Lyria really sued her, her life would be over. No, she could seek help from Kaitlin. That woman would surely help her since they were on the same boat. I will never apologize to you. Go ahead, I'm not afraid. Do you think Caitlin will help you? You can try it if you want. Lyria was done with Maya. She wouldn't show any mercy to her, so let the jail be the punishment for the woman. Everyone in the cafeteria started to disperse as lunchtime was over, but the stories from their mouths didn't stop. The employees continued to criticize Maya, Kaitlin, and their family. As for Lyria, they turned sympathetic towards her, whereas before they joined in criticizing her for being too cheap and money-crazed. Maya returned to her office and her manager immediately called her with an angry face. You're fired. Maya was taken aback when she heard the words from the man in front of her, who was also her boyfriend. Darling, how can I be fired? Stop calling me darling. You really want to drag me to hell, Maya. From now on, our relationship is over. Darling, what did I do wrong? Why are you suddenly ending our relationship? Tears began to well up in Maya's eyes. It's all because you're too foolish. How could you cause trouble in this company? You even endangered my position. Quickly pack up your things and leave. No, I can't accept all of this. Maya unwillingly refused to give up. If you don't want to leave willingly, then security will drag you out. Maya had no choice but to leave the room. She clenched her fists in anger but her eyes were filled with desperate tears. 
It was all because of Lyria. If Lyria hadn't recorded their conversation, the situation wouldn't be like this. Meanwhile, in her office, Lyria had already received apologies from her doubting colleagues. Sarah, don't you have anything to say? I apologize for wrongly accusing you. I didn't hear your words. Sarah clenched both her fists tightly. She knew that Lyria was trying to embarrass her. I apologize for wrongly accusing you. Sarah raised her voice. I feel like your apology isn't sincere, but it's good enough since you know your mistake. Lyria sat back at her place and calmly resumed her work. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Axelsev had received a report from Sylvian about what Lyria had done. Axelsev ordered Sylvian to delete the recordings Lyria had sent to the group to avoid future troubles for Lyria. Um, what about the situation with Chaser Construction? Chaser Construction has received help from the Brooks family. He destroyed Chaser Construction. If Alexi Brooks doesn't want to withdraw from the Chaser family, then find a way to destroy that family as well. Axelsev wouldn't allow anyone to oppress his little wife. Very well, sir. I miss you so much. Axelsev pulled Lyria into his arms. The man had just returned from his errands and immediately sought his wife in their room. I miss you too. Lyria inhaled Axelsev's scent. She felt so calm after that. Uh, did you do something good today? Axelsev asked after he finished indulging in his wife's presence. Lyria nodded her head. I got back at Caitlin a little today. Good. Um, you should know how to retaliate. Do you want me to teach you how to deal with people like your family? Axelsev asked with concern. His methods of dealing with others were never soft. He would push them to the point of despair until they considered ending their lives. I'll ask for your advice if I need it later. Lyria wanted to deal with it in her own way first. If she used Axelsev, everything would become too easy for her. Um, okay, um, do as you wish. Just don't forget that even if you kill someone, I'll support you. Lyria chuckled softly. I won't forget it. It's great to have blind support like this. Axelsev hugged Lyria again. That's why you mustn't waste your support. I'm not foolish. Of course, I'll hold tightly onto my greatest support. Axel Sev laughed playfully. You are indeed a smart woman. That's why I'm so interested in you and want to have you by my side. Lyria really liked the way Axel Sev spoke to her. The woman tiptoed a bit and gently kissed her husband's lips. Teasing him, she successfully ignited Axel Sev's desire. Indeed, Axelsev was very weak when it came to Lyria. Even just hearing Lyria's voice could make the lower part of him hard. Soon, they engaged in an activity full of excitement, intoxication, and addiction. Half an hour ago, Raisin contacted Lyria, expressing his desire to meet her regarding the circulating rumors. Yesterday, Caitlin came to Raisin with a swollen face recounting how Lyria humiliated her and claimed that Lyria had edited the recordings to defame her and her family. As Kaitlyn soon. To be husband, Raisin was naturally furious at Lyria for slandering Kaitlyn. Currently, Raisin was waiting for Lyria at a restaurant. He had reserved a private room for them to talk. Lyria arrived five minutes after Raisin. The woman was reluctant to deal with Raisin again as she was already disgusted by her unfaithful ex-fiancé. What do you want to discuss with me, Raisin? Lyria asked indifferently. She used to be warm towards Raisin, but after he betrayed her and cheated behind her back, she became numb to it all. She didn't even spend time mourning the man. Lyria had strong reasons to believe that someone like Raisin, who was unfaithful and trusted other people's words over his own partners, was not worth shedding tears for at all. It was true that Kaitlyn came to seduce Razin first, but if Razin had not been tempted, the illicit relationship between them wouldn't have happened. Lyria, are you still not satisfied causing trouble for the Chaster family? How can you slander a family that has taken care of you for two years? You really have no shame. Razin said, confirming Lyria's suspicion that Kaitlyn had complained to him about the incident yesterday, adding or subtracting details to make herself look like the victim, and Lyria as the villain. Raisin, is this all you want to say to me? 
You must clear Caitlin's and her family's name or I will take harsh actions against you. Until now, I still consider our past relationship, but if you continue to make Caitlyn sad, I won't let you get away with it." Lyria sneered with disgust. Haven't you taken harsh actions against me for the past two years? You even slapped a woman, Raisin. No real man would hit a woman like you did to me some time ago. That's because you deserved it. I haven't even counted what you did in the past, Lyria. You should thank Caitlyn for asking me not to pursue you. Up until this moment, you are still being fooled by Caitlyn. Raisin, you and Caitlyn truly make a perfect couple. I sincerely bless you both. Don't badmouth Caitlyn, Lyria. I'm not like others who would believe your words. Raisin, you're truly laughable. In the past, you easily believed what others said about my faults. But now you trust Caitlyn so much. Well, since you trust Caitlyn so much, I hope you continue to trust her until the end. Lyria would clear her name today. She had brought the recordings of her conversations with Kite Lin from the past. It's all because you're despicable. I don't trust you because you deceived me with your fake innocence. You played around with many men behind my back, but in front of me, you acted like a faithful woman. As for Caitlin, she's not like you, so I trust her more than I trust you. Razin replied. Remembering the past, Razin would surely be angry. He had liked Lyria for a long time and they eventually started a relationship. Raisin thought he was the luckiest man in the world to have a partner like Lyria. But who would have thought that Lyria would be so despicable? Razin wouldn't believe anyone's words without evidence. He saw recordings of Lyria sleeping with other men, and there were even photos of Lyria kissing different men. I never defended myself before, but today I refute all your accusations. I never betrayed you before. Raisin, you should investigate if those videos and photos you saw were real or manipulated. In the past, Lyria didn't deny Raisin's accusations. Even though she had recordings of her conversations with Kaitlyn, that could clear her name. But she didn't do it because she was already disappointed in Razen. Even if she cleared her name, the affair between Raisin and Kaitlyn couldn't be erased. Furthermore, at the time when Raisin accused her, she had just lost her father, and her mother was hospitalized. Lyria was even lost herself, so she couldn't be bothered to care about what others said about her. Lyria, there's no need to deny. After seeing all those videos, I know you better. You willingly became a mistress to a married man for a luxurious life. After that marriage failed, you even accepted an arranged marriage with a mentally disabled man. I'm utterly disgusted by you. Lyria couldn't fathom what was going through Raisin's mind. This man seemed to lack even an ounce of good judgment about her. Lyria used to think Raisin was a very intelligent man. But she was clearly mistaken. As it turned out, Raisin's mind was very blunt. This scoundrel didn't even use a bit of his brain to investigate before blindly believing everything. Firstly, I didn't want to marry an old man. That marriage was arranged by Mrs. Mallory without my consent. She threatened to stop my mother's treatment if I refused to marry that old man. Secondly, it's the same for the idiotic man you mentioned. Do you think with my pretty face, I would marry two men like that just for a luxurious life? Razan, you underestimate me. Who knows what's in your mind? You probably just want to deceive them. Is that how you see me? We grew up together, but you don't know even a bit about me. I truly wasted my love on you in the past. Isn't the biggest regret of my life is wasting time on trash like you. Lyria retorted coldly. For this meeting. You just want me to apologize to Caitlin and clear the Chaser family's name, right? No. I won't apologize and I won't clear the Chaser family's name. Lyria, do you want to destroy your own family? No, I won't destroy them. I just want to take everything they have right now. They've been toying with my life and my mother's life for two years. See what I'm going to do to them? Lyria, what can a woman like you do? He, he, don't you think I can spread my legs lie to seduce powerful men? Raisin, you know with this pretty face of mine, if I intend to seduce powerful men, I'll surely get them.